Uh, and her suggestion is that that's one of the things that the, uh, the plastic arts do, is that they present to us a sort of space separate from the space around us in which we live and work. And in that space, objects and forms and shapes and textures and colors are being put together in such a way as to give expression to, again, this concept that she calls uh, an expressive form. So she calls that this concept of space, or what she actually calls virtual space. She considers that the primary illusion of the plastic arts. And I think that's a great term. I don't know. And I'm not, you know, I'm, actually, I'm a composer, I'm not an artist. I only hope that the insight that I sense from her words mean something to you artists. <laughs> I think she's really great about music, so uh, that's all I can say for sure. So I, I read this and I think, hmm, that sounds pretty good to me, so you artists will have to tell me if it, uh, if it means anything to you. But uh, anyway, I think what's it, that idea of virtual space, I think, is an interesting concept. And when we finally get to music, which is where I'm going to end here, um, <clears throat> the one thing that she points out, you know, you know, what is music for? Well, she suggests that there's another aspect to our existence which has the same kind of dimensionless and undifferentiated uh, quality to it. And that's time. Now, one of the things I think is interesting about time is, of course, it's very hard to define. And the other thing is that um, we are constantly, throughout the, the history of humanity, dealing with ways in which to chop up and differentiate and, and otherwise measure, if, so, if such a thing were possible, time. You know, one of the things that always amused me about reading about ancient history was the idea of where the seven-day week came from. And people read, for instance, the uh, famous uh, opening chapters of Genesis and the, the establishment of the seven-day week. And one of the things I always thought was interesting about that story was when I found out how in the same locale the Middle East, where the uh, Genesis story would have actually been written down by someone, it's attributed to Moses, of course, was that you had competing theories about how long the week was. There were nine-day weeks, and there were 11-day weeks going on. And in the 20th century, the Soviet Union actually tried to establish a five-day week. So one of the repercussions, I think, about the Genesis story seems to be the idea of the seven-day week. But my point is, besides the uh, theological implications of that, is that the, uh, the idea is that we're always trying to measure time because it has no measure in and of itself. So we as humans impose dimensions onto it because, I don't know, I think we feel kind of freaked out when we don't have those kinds of dimensions. And I think space is the same way. So her suggestion is one of the things about music is that it creates this kind of, she calls it audible time. And the idea is that when you go from the beginning of a period of time to the end of a period of time, we feel things during that duration. We, our lives are, she suggests, filled with different senses of, you could call them tension and relaxation, you can call them, you can call them anxiety or pleasure or whatever you want to call them, but we feel things all the time. And her suggestion is that one of the things that music does is that it takes those fleeting and fragmentary and often incomplete or inconclusive feelings in us and it presents them in such a way that they have a kind of order and organization and maybe for the first time too we get this sense that a piece of music can present us with a sense of conclusiveness that in our real world experiences has never really been achieved or it always winds up being fragmentary and then you're on to the next thing, something interrupts that. Whereas music is this chance to present time in such a way that the fleeting feelings of tension and resolution and uh, excitation and relaxation, that these things actually have some kind of coherent and maybe even ideal shape, a shape that is only momentarily suggested in our actual lives, but ideally represented, maybe even in, such a, in a pleasurable way in, uh, in music. That's basically all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>